This is a brief look at um, Google's Classroom um, from both the teacher point of view and the student point of view. What we have on the right hand side of the screen is a student logged in called teststudent at weeklypart.org and over here on the left hand side of the screen this is me. So the teacher sees the classes which um, they've created and um, there's a home button and on there I can switch between classes if I want to or I can just click on the panel that's been created for a class. Um, each class you've got a little three buttons here that allows you to rename or delete a class. If you delete a class it's permanent and you get warned about that before you do it. Each class has a folder in the Google Drive and you've got a link to the folder here. We'll come back to that in a few moments. So I've got two classes here. This is a real one with real students enrolled in it. Or in it. Um, so we'll be using this one and an additional one just to show the class creation procedure. So we just look at um, how to create a class. So you click on the plus button, create class, give it a name. Um, this is the name that the folder will have in Google Drive. So this is how it's going to be identifiable. So um, I'll call this test class 2. I'm going to delete this one after this demo. So um, it's just a throwaway one. Um, let's say it was a GCSE class. So that takes you straight to um, the view for that particular class. There's one customization that you can do and that's changing the photo. Uh, you can choose your own photos at the moment but you can choose any of these stock ones which make it look a little bit more special perhaps. Okay, so there we go. At the moment this course has no students in it. So the first thing you'd want to do I guess is to add some students. So you can click on students there's a couple of ways to add students. You can click on the Add Students and browse your um, Google Apps um, directory and add students um, that way by selecting them. Um, you should be able to add them by selecting a group if you've got your students in the group so you can add them all in one go but every time I do that at the moment I get an error which is something I've reported. Or you can distribute this code here. If I copy that code, and if I go into the student view, if the student has no classes whatsoever, um, they get a thing saying you're signed into Google Classroom and they get invited to enter a code if they've not already been added by you to the class. If you want to add them by the code, or the student does, you click on the plus button as a student and you put in that code. So I can just paste it in and click on join. and you can see on the teacher view that test student has joined this class and uh, now I am in that class and this test student is now in a member of uh, two classes so I can switch to physics if I want to or I can go to home and you can see there's now two classes for this student. So that's all there is to joining a class. A couple of caveats associated with this at the moment you can only have one teacher per class given that we have either two or three teachers per class that's um, a bit of an issue because you don't want students having hundreds of different classes on here because they teach take I don't know, ten, 10 or so different subjects you don't want them having it's going to get quite confusing if everybody were to start using this right now because the, each teacher has to create a class they just we really need to have one um, so accepting that it's adding students is simply enough. Um, so we go back to the stream for this new class. What you can do as a teacher is make an announcement. If I click into that class of the student as well, so you can see what happens. Um, welcome to this test class. And when you make an announcement um, or a post, 
A bit like in Google Plus, you can upload stuff from your computer, you can add stuff from your Google Drive, you can add a YouTube video, um, or you can put in a link to something, um, website for example. So let's put in something from YouTube. Um, I'm a chemist, so let's have a chemistry video. Let's see what we come up. Let's just pick a random video. And if we post that now, you'll see that that comes up pretty much immediately for the student when you post. And as a student, I can add a comment. Okay, and you see that comes up more or less straight away in the common thread for the teacher as well. Equally, the student can do pretty much the same thing. Um, so the student can share something from their drive, um, from YouTube, or upload something, or share a link, just like you would do if you were using a private um, Google Plus community. So let's pick a YouTube video, um, let's pick a different chemistry video. Or you can put in the URL rather than searching. Post. And you'll see that that comes up pretty much straight away for the teacher and anybody else who would be a member of that class. So you can have a discussion, a bit like you would do on um, Google+. So that's the announcements. And that's all the student can do. Um, they can post stuff and reply to stuff that's in the discussion thread. Um, a teacher can set assignments and uh, this is something that will appear as a student as an assignment and something that they will have to hand in. So title of this assignment is um, create a slide presentation on the development of a nuclear physics, whatever. Um, and you can put in more stuff there and make a long description of the assignment if you want. And then you can, again, you can upload a file you can um, attach something, a resource that you've got in your Google Drive. You can um, add a YouTube video or you can attach a link. So these are resources that will go with that student. If you um, attach something from your drive, um, what you'll get is the option of, if I just pick something random, uh, vocabulary list, okay, whatever that is. Um, Students can view the file, so that's a read-only file for all the students to look at. Students can edit the file, which means it's a collaborative document for them all to do something on, and then make a copy for each student. If you select that option, from the ones that I've tried to do so far, just be prepared to have a little bit of a wait at the student side, maybe five or six minutes before the student can actually view that assignment because what goes on in the background of course is that assign it, it, it's creating documents for each student. Now I've not tried this with a class of say 30 students, I've tried it with a few and it does take quite a while for that assignment to be viewable by the student. It'll appear in the common stream but if they click on it it'll just tell them to come back later. So this is something to do not on the spur of the moment in front of the students but something perhaps before a lesson so set an assignment maybe at home or half an hour before a lesson begins and then you won't have students saying it doesn't work maybe the time the lag there will be reduced so we can assign that assignment I'm not going to put any particular thing attached on it just to make it a little bit, a little bit quicker so if I click on assign You'll see for the student that assignment turns up, and uh, I didn't select 
any date so it's now due tomorrow so it comes up with a little nice red exclamation mark saying it's due tomorrow if I click on this assignment um, there's nothing there at the moment I can add a common so I can have a conversation with the teacher about this assignment so um, how do I do this And if I click on the assignment as the teacher, what I should have is, and I can see it there, how do I do this? You'll see a question associated with that assignment coming back from that student. Those, This conversation with the teacher is only visible between the individual student and the teacher, rather than going into the whole group the discussion thread. The student on the assignment panel can add something directly from their Google Drive or they can add a link or they can upload a file or they can create directly from within here a document presentation. So let's create a presentation and it'll appear there. And the nice thing about this is that it gives um, the document, the title of the assignment and it puts the name of the student next to it if they do this or if you create a copy of the document for everybody it does put the name in there as well. So if I click on that document uh, you say create a slides presentation on the development of nuclear physics and it's got the name at the end which you can click on rename and scroll across there you go, test student's name Okay, so call that nuclear physics. Just close that up. So that student has this in here now. Okay, that slides presentation is view. It, it, it is only in the student's drive at the moment. The teacher can't see it, can't do anything with it until you click on turn in. So I'm going to turn that in. Um, there is the option of adding an note to the teacher and the student can add multiple documents here it doesn't just have to be one and click on turn in at the point at which the student turns it in this now becomes read only for the student and it becomes um, editable by the um, teacher it turns the owner of the document into the teacher Let's see how this is so this now comes in as turned in, so I can put in a grade here, and at the moment it's just out of 0, 1, out of 20, out of 50, out of 100. Hopefully the range of grading options will increase. Now what will appear here, but not instantly, um, will be that document, and I'll be able to click on that document, look at that document and give it comments. We might come back to that. But if I go to a different class, so as the teacher I'll go to this one that I've called physics, test student is also in this class and um, this time I put in a document which I created a copy for for each student so they've got their own individualized copy. So if I go to, um, as the student go to the physics class so they've got this write an essay on relativity which is this one here what you can see now is the document that I sent to them so they don't have to create a document you can send them a document it might just be something a blank document saying physics essay or whatever and it's put the name of the student at the end so this now is a document that's owned by me which is an exact copy of that one this however does take a few moments to appear student end in fact by a few moments I mean five or six minutes in reality is what I've found okay sometimes it's been quicker sometimes it's been slower but there is a little bit of lag and of course you can have the conversation with the teacher so what's going on drive side so if I go into the students drive 
you'll see that there is a folder called Classroom being created in the student's Google Drive. And within here, you'll find a folder for each of the classes which they've um, been enrolled on. So the one that we've just done is Test Class 2. And you can see that the slides presentation that we've created has been automatically put into Test Class 2. The student doesn't have to think about organizing the work if they create the work within Classroom. And if I go into the Physics one, you'll find a copy of that document which I fired out to the student. So that's their own vert copy of that document now. In terms of the teacher's Google Drive, they get something similar, a classroom folder, and they get a folder for each um, for each class that they take. So if I go for the physics one, if you send out a document to a student that is called template, and you'll find it's there. So that's this here. Um, if I go back to the one that we've just done, test class two, and every assignment that you create for a class creates a folder. So in test class two, create a slides presentation on, it was nuclear physics, I think. And you can see that now the thing that the student submitted has appeared in my drive create a slides presentation. So with a little bit of luck, if we go back to the other presentation, uh, class rather, test class two, wasn't it? And if I click on this, you can return the folder, but normally in the past, I've seen something appear here, but what you do, oh, there we go, give it a few moments and it does materialize, so once you've selected it you'll see the common thread and you'll see the document that has been um, submitted, so you can just click onto it, or you can go to that folder within the drive that's got all of the things to do with that assignment in. Anyways, it's pretty easy to use, just um, be aware that the setting assignment thing, there's a little bit of a lag that goes on there. That's it.